My name is Isha, as, as you know, um, and I started at ALM now a little over two years. Feels like a lot longer, actually, because so much has happened in the legal tech world. But before that, I was in college. Um, I was studying journalism at, at Emerson College in Boston, um, and it was actually broadcast journalism. So this is a switch for me going back to print and multimedia. Um, and I used to report on, on women's incarceration um, as, a, as a freelancer. So I realized that I didn't have any health care um, and that, that that could only go on for so long. Um, so I applied to ALM because I was into legal reporting and tech and um, the rest is history, I suppose. That is a big question, because also AI, I mean, you know, we have to now split AI and generative AI and uh, what that means um, for different people. I think that, as, you know, as someone who's only really been reporting on it for two, two and a half years, I have not seen as much excitement and as much panic at the same time about a technology. Um, and that's really interesting. So I think, I think it's kind of bonding um, the, the legal tech community in a way because you know people are relying on each other for information. There's there's no expert here because like it's also new. Um, so it's kind of in my short tenure, it's been interesting to see people who haven't talked to each other before kind of asking each other questions, um, trying to trying to learn about the technology, um, and then you know asking people questions uh, about if they are going to have a job next year? Is, is the AI going to replace them? You know, the robots are coming fear, which is always existent. Um, and I don't know the answers to any of this, but, you know, that's what I see. I would not say I've seen anecdotal information to support that other than you know, it's kind of a truism, I hear it all the time. But I will say that all of the sort of <clears throat> layoffs that we saw within legal tech and even the downsizing within um, legal last year and this year, um, you know, legal ops were hit quite hard. And, um, and I think that, that that is because oftentimes in-house folks see them as a cost center and see them as um, an unnecessary expense. Um, and I think that's a shame because I honestly think that um, when times are hard, like, like we saw in, in uh, the 08 crash, legal ops are often the people who sort of have and have found innovative means to um, figure out what tech can cut costs and figure out where the innovation lies, um, you know, in spite of smaller budgets. So I do think that in-house gets hit harder legal ops get, get hit harder, but um, I don't really think that that's, that's um, a smart way to do things right now. I agree that there are more and more self-service AI tools on the exhibit floor, in the market. They're more usable than ever. They're super you know, user-friendly. Uh, but I don't know if, at least in the short term, that's going to draw legal work back in-house because in-house still has a long way to go when it comes to 
um, being on the front lines of buying the technology and using it and uh, you know, going through the motions of change management that are inevitable. And in-house, much like AI, is in many ways a black box when it comes to who's making the decisions, how is it all going to go about when it comes to uh, when it comes to buying the tech. So, yeah, I suppose if in-house just were to go ahead and buy all the AI that was out there, maybe, but I don't really see that happening so easily in, in the next couple of years. Um, and if that were to happen, which is a big if, maybe, um, but it's a little bit of a long shot, in my opinion. We've seen so many cool products. We've seen, we've demoed all this tech that I really can't believe exists. So it is really cool, it is really powerful, um, and it really is a sea change for legal tech. But I will say um, that we also see so many vendors kind of racing to make non-announcements is what we call them. You know, they'll always be like, oh, we are going to announce uh, in the coming days or in the coming months. And I think that it's a symptom of this kind of competition and race to just integrate AI and to just um, integrate Gen AI and, and get on the bandwagon and the, you know, they're afraid of being left behind. But I would say that the tech that is the most powerful from our perspective and the most impressive is from vendors that have taken their time and that haven't really rushed. Um, so the big picture for me would be, don't worry so much about being the first to integrate a certain technology if you're not ready. I think that your customers would appreciate it a lot more you know, if when you integrate it, it's usable, it's working. Um, that's what I would say.